a it's a pleasure and honor to be in this in this dialogue with you. But I think that a huge part of what you haven't said is a you've offered a recognition that mass incarceration has not worked, mm. and that is an unfortunate consequence of government practices that just didn't work. Mm -hmm. But there, the truth is that there's an extremely long history of unfortunate government practices that don't work that particularly affect black people mm -hmm. and black families. Mm -hmm. And until we as a country, and then the person who's in the seat that you seek, mm -hmm. actually addresses the anti-blackness current mm -hmm. that is America's first drug. We're in a meeting about drugs, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. America's first drug is free black labor mm -hmm. and turning black bodies into profit. Mm -hmm. And the mass incarceration system mirrors <coughs> an awful lot like the prison, the prison plantation system. Mm -hmm. It's the same. It's a similar thread, mm -hmm. right? And until someone takes that message and speaks that truth to white people in this country, so that we can actually take on anti-blackness as a founding problem mm -hmm. in this country. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that there's gonna be a solution mm -hmm. because what the conversations that are happening now and why there's so much mm -hmm. so much uh, cohesion across the across the divide, the, the red side and the blue side, is because of money. Right? Mm -hmm. We spend a lot of money on prisons. Mm -hmm. We're spending more money on prisons mm -hmm. than we are in schools. Right? Mm -hmm. But if we look at it from a lens of let's solve this financial problem and we don't look at the greater bottom line that African Americans who are Americans are suffering at greater rates mm -hmm. than most other people, every other people mm -hmm. for the length of this country, mm -hmm. then it's not gonna go away. It's just gonna morph into something mm -hmm. new and evolved. And I, I genuinely wanna know, you and your family mm -hmm. have been in no uncertain way, partially responsible for it. It's more than most. Now, the, there may have been unintended consequences, but now that you understand the consequences, what in your heart has changed that's gonna change the direction of this country? Mm. Like what in you, like not your platform, not, not what you're supposed to say. Like, how do you actually feel that's different than you did before? Like, what were the mistakes? And how can those mistakes that you made be lessons for all of America for a moment of reflection on how we treat black people mm -hmm. in this country? Mm -hmm. I just well, wanna, I, I, and I apologize, in, in we have I would really people. love to allow her to answer yeah, no, this question. I'm not, I'm not and stopping. we've worked really hard. We've driven we're, so many yeah, hours. We're not stopping. Yeah. I'm just letting you guys know before. He is, we've got a couple more minutes. We still have more people in the overflow that are people. waiting. We're so I'm not interrupting so what you're about to say. I just wanted to sort of mm -hmm. give you guys a heads up, heads up on timing. So, yeah, so we've got limited time. Well, obviously, it's a very thoughtful question. It deserves a thoughtful answer. And I can only tell you that I feel uh, very committed to and responsible for doing whatever I can. I've spent most of my adult life uh, focused on kids uh, through the Children's Defense Fund and other uh, efforts to try to give kids, particularly poor kids, particularly you know black kids and Hispanic kids, uh, the same chance to live up to their own God-given potential as any other kid. Uh, that's where I've been focused. Um, and. I think that there has to be a reckoning. I agree with that. Uh, but I also think there has to be some uh, positive vision and plan that you can move people toward. I mean, once you say, you know, this country has still not recovered from its original sin, mm -hmm. which is true, once you say that, then the next question by people who are on the sidelines, which is the vast majority of Americans, the next question is, well, so what do you want me to do about it? What am I supposed to do about it? That's what I'm trying to uh, put together in a way that I can explain it and I can sell it. Um, because in politics, if you can't explain it and you can't sell it, it stays on the shelf. And this is now a time, a moment in time, just like the civil rights movement or the women's movement or the gay rights movement or a lot of other movements reached a point in time 
the people behind that consciousness raising and advocacy, they had a plan ready to go. So that when you turn to you know, the women's movement, we want to pass this and we want to pass that and we want to do this, problems are not all taken care of, we know that. Obviously, I know more about the civil rights movement in the old days because I had a lot of involvement in working with people. So they had a plan, this piece of legislation, this court case we're going to make, et cetera, et cetera. Same with the gay rights movement. You know, we're sick of homophobia, we're sick of being discriminated against, we want marriage equality, and we're starting in the states, and we're going to keep going until we get it at the highest court of the land. So all I'm saying is your analysis is totally fair. It's historically fair, it's psychologically fair, it's economically fair. But you're going to have to come together as a movement and say, here's what we want done about it. Because you can get lip service from as many white people as you can pack into Yankee Stadium and mm -hmm. a million more like it. We're going to say, oh, we get it, we get it, we're going to be nicer, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. That's not enough, at least right. in my book. That's not how I see mm -hmm. politics. So the consciousness raising, the advocacy, the passion, the youth of your movement is so critical. But now all I'm suggesting is, even for us sinners, find some common ground on agendas that can make a difference right here and now in people's lives. And that's what I would love to you know, have your thoughts about uh, because that's what I'm trying to figure out how to do. So yeah, deal with mass incarceration. I don't, it's not just an economic issue, although I grant you some people see it like that. But it's more than that. I think there is a sense like, you know, low level offenders, disparity in treatment, we gotta do something about that. Um, I think that a lot of the issues about housing and about uh, you know, job opportunities, ban the box, a lot of these things, let's get an agenda that addresses as much of the problem as we can. Because then you can be for something in addition to getting people to have to admit that they're part of a long history in our country of you know, either you know, pr pr uh, proposing, supporting, condoning, uh, discrimination, uh, segregation, et cetera. Now, what do we do next? And, and that's, that's what I'm trying to figure out in my campaign. So that's what I'm doing.